Kellen. Good morning, Mr. Joe. How are you doing today? Good morning, Aaron. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Man, before we even jump in, after experiencing this music, I just want to know what it's like to put the live show together because I just feel that it's going to be one of those that we're going to talk about for a long time after we see it. Um, well, thank you. Are you referring <laughs> – which band are you referring to? We're, we're, we're talking you, about Stratif- Stratifurus. <laughs> thank you. Stratifurus. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you were asking about Kansas or Stratifurus. Um well, yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, the um, we always put on uh, as intense a live show as we can. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the production budget yeah. of some of the bigger bands, but we, we have a lot of cool video footage and we just play our asses off. And um, now I think with the new music that we just recorded in the studio, um, we wrote a check that we can't cash because uh, some of the stuff was so elaborate elaborate and so many guests and so many tracks um we're gonna have to either find ways to condense it and do new arrangements or you know go big and bring a bunch of people on stage and you know over the top you know (laughs) maybe for certain for certain performances we'll do that you know in listening to the music Um, i love the idea that that you allow us to explore with you because i feel like that i'm right there in that moment and i'm going oh my god where are they going to take this song oh my here we go and then i mean i just love the way that you take us with you um, well, thank you. I mean, mission accomplished. I, that I, you know, as a fan of music, I always, you know, some of my favorite albums of all time just allowed me to transcend and, and became part of my DNA and, and inspired me. So all my goal, my whole life was just chasing that and, and getting other people to have that feeling with my music yeah so you know to hear you say that means a lot it's a great deal there one of yeah, the songs yeah. that i really check into is game of chicken i mean it, i love the tempo of this song and 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 be you were you thinking about the the potential of the listener being on the other side or is it something that is like okay this is what i'm feeling in this moment of now do it agree with it and then relinquish it um you're talking about the groove of that song yes oh my god i mean you don't get that on the radio <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I, I was just, you know, certain things just pop in your head. And I was, uh, imagining that got, 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 got like kind of a retro sixties kind of thing. Um, and, but my band turned it into, put it, brought it to a different direction. And I thought, you know, I don't have any music with that particular group. It might be nice to include that in a song. And then, you know, I came up with the chord changes and the, and the subject matter was, was really on my mind. It was a, kind of about political turmoil and, and you know, social media and uh, people being stuck in their uh, corners and not talking to each other anymore. Yeah. And that we're on this collision course because we can't, the kind of flow, you get into this flow and it's like, it's, it's coming from somewhere else, you know? Um, so when I finished that one, I had a feeling like, yeah, this is going to, people are going to dig this. I think, <laughs> I hope. Building up that relationship with the Prague community. I mean, uh, people all over the world get into this and they'll, they'll travel over to, uh, to uh, UK just for a Prague fest. Yes, they will. Um, and I, when I played cruise to the edge, there was a lot of European fans that, you know, they plan their year around that cruise. <laughs> and they, they go there every year. So it's amazing how dedicated people are, uh, yeah. And people fly out to Kansas shows all over the country who, who follow Kansas as well. So, Dude, I have been following Kansas since 1977. I mean, I still have their 45s. And, and then to sit down with those guys and, and then and to talk to them about the 50th anniversary and everything, it's like, you know, it may be 50 years, but I, I think that we're still just meeting. Yeah, I think that when I, when I first spoke with Phil Ehart, he says he doesn't want to be an oldies act. He wants that band to continue and evolve and keep yeah. creating new music and stay viable uh, you know, as long as possible, even beyond his tenure. So I think that's a great attitude. I think music is ageless and ageless and timeless. You know, one one of the greatest violin parts of any song has always been "Dust in the Wind." I mean, for you to step into that role, I mean, that you now get to play it. Yeah, it's. I, I try not to let it get to my head. Um, uh, you know, I I played that song a lot before I joined the band because people requested as a cover song all the time but to to play that iconic solo in front of all those people and knowing how much the song means to to them and to the world is is really unbelievable you know and i try to honor it as much as i can 
Now, the other um, side of your, your music, I mean, I mean, with you putting together these, uh, uh, you know, with, with the other band, you have a double live box set. That in itself is a great exploration because people, they don't want to change the music every five seconds. Just put something on and let me just take it all in. And I, I, I commend you for mm-hmm. this. Well, thanks for saying that. I, I think a lost art form is the album. I wish more, um, I don't want to sound like an old codger, but I wish more kids would get away from playlists and listen to a full album and just let it take them where it wants to go. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's, you know, it, an album tells a story and it has a certain flow from song to song. And as artists, we put a lot of thought into that. What, you know, what the order of the songs is going to be, how much space between the songs. <laughs> uh, and, and all of that, you know, it takes you, it tells a story, it takes you on a journey. So that's my goal with everything I do, with every record I do. Um, and this this kind of came together accidentally. We, we were originally just going to release the 2019 performance. It was going to be like a 70 minute thing. And then um, we were almost done editing and mixing that. And then 2021, we got a last minute invitation to play that festival again. And we got even better, what I thought was better performances of some of the songs. So we decided to mix it up and do half from the 2019 and half from the 2021 show. But then it, it took longer to finish the project because we started putting all that material together yep. as well. <laughs> uh, and it turned into this two hour thing, um, which we're very happy about. You know. When you do your version of Hysteria, do you not inside your imagination see it as a rock opera? I think a lot of uh, muses, music is, is operatic. I think yeah. they definitely have the DNA of Queen uh, and bands like that. And um, I, I love that grandiosity uh, of certain rock bands and I was a huge Queen fan as well so yeah it, it could be part of a rock opera and also I was hearing that when I reimagined the song so in the studio version we got uh, an operatic soprano to do some of the really? Oz uh, it, during the intro to make it really sound over the top wow you know? she she wasn't obviously she wasn't in the live show but she was there Melanie Metrano great soprano and I had her on, on some of the other tracks on, on that album uh in 2017 when we, when we first recorded that song we've seen the live performances on youtube we we, we look at the live yes. crowds we hear the live crowds now when with you being in the studio to create this next one it's almost like our imaginations we're, we're, we're so used to hearing the live crowd but now it's it's going to be intimate it's it's going to be us being on the only one in the stands i think um the studio gives you freedom because you can make give a song a uh, thicker texture and add other instruments and add layers of sound yep. and mess around with the panning. Um, and also you hear all these little parts clear, more clearly. <laughs> so, but, you know, I think we just finished mastering the new record and it, it does have a very much a live feel that it does. Um, which is hard to do in the studio, especially a lot of this stuff was recorded individually in our separate studios mm-hmm. during the pandemic. So I'm proud of the fact that we still got a really live, raw feel to the music, despite the the limitations and the fact that we were isolated when we were recording it. So, um, yeah, I also think people make the mistake of limiting themselves in the studio, saying, "Well, how are we going to reproduce this live?" Yeah, I always say, like, if, if people, if everyone had that mentality, there'd be no Bohemian Rhapsody, um, <laughs> or you know, or a lot of great studio creations that are impossible to reproduce live. I think the studio is its own animal and playing live is its own animal. And you could, you could do whatever you want. The sky's the limit in the studio. Uh, And then you figure it out later, you know. That's what I love about modern day music right now, especially since the lockdown, is that the musicians just seem to be freer. They're 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 not trapped. They're going, man, let's try this. Let's do. I mean, pull the lens back and you see that the violin has become so mainstream in music. Yes, um, I, I'm so happy about that. It, it's it's to everyone's benefit because what's, what's happening is more and more electric violin is less and less of a novelty instrument. Uh, it's more and more common. And, um, you know, artists like Lindsey Sterling, mm-hmm. people have a different differences of opinion about her, but because so many people in the mainstream, you know, regular folks see her, they're like, wow, that's really cool. I want, I want that at my party or at... It, it, you know, if they see see it in a band, it's more common, and, and more groups are using strings, electric and acoustic. So that creates work for for more string players, and uh, you know, it for it forces more string players to think outside the box and learn different styles of music. 
Wow. Um, so as a, as a teacher, you know, having taught for 20 plus years at music camps and taught improvisation and, and how to use gear and how to play electric, um, there's a whole groundswell. There's a whole new generation of great players that are going to take over the world. I think, <laughs> <laughs> dude, so, I I grew up watching Doug Kershaw, and I mean that that man mesmerized me. Yeah. The amazing player. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. wow. So where can people go to find out more information about not only the 50th anniversary of the Kansas concert, but for what you're doing, they, they need to discover you put it on their Spotify list and, and jump onto iHeart and listen to your sound. Uh, well, I apologize. My name and the band name is hard to spell. So I've simplified the <laughs> URL <laughs> for listeners. So my, my website, Joe D violin, Dot com jodvilin.com and that's also my social media handle jodvilin um and through the website you can link to my spotify facebook uh tiktok yada 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 now the band is uh, stratosband.com s t r a t o s band.com and um if you go to our band camp and type code ho 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 <laughs> you get 20% off wow. all the music, mugs, t-shirts, and everything. Wow. So that's until New Year's Day, that sale is available. Wow. <laughs> so there's my shameless plug. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you got to do it, though. That's what it's all about. It's about selling that merchandise in my book, man. Sell those t-shirts. Come on. Let me have that album well, You cover. got to. <laughs> well, to, I got to be honest. I mean, not everyone knows. It's very, very hard for musicians to make money on recordings anymore because streaming has kind of killed that revenue stream. Mm -hmm. So we rely on people buying T-shirts and mugs and actually download, paying to download our MP3s or buying physical CDs if they are still able to do that. So all of that helps us support ourselves. Wow. You know? um, and, and of course, playing live as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself yeah. uh, bringing uh, the, the strap band in, into the Carolinas or anything like that? You're going to travel around with them? Uh, well, it's we, we don't tour that much because of my schedule with yeah. Kansas. It's yeah. very demanding. Um, we mostly play regional shows. Uh, we have a show coming up at the Iridium in New York City on February 9th. Um, and we're working on a few mini tours, you know. Um, so I, I, I don't know what the future holds. I'd love to be able to tour more with this band, but it all depends on scheduling, you know. God, I could totally um, see you teaming up with symphonies across the country. That would be amazing. I've actually done a lot of residencies with high school and college orchestras wow. on my own. And then we end up playing Stratospheria songs with a local rhythm section and, and a big orchestra. That's always fun to do. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, you've got to so. come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Mr. Joe. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Will you be brilliant today, okay? You too, my friend, and, and wishing you a very happy holiday and happy new year.